Hi guys! This video is the first part of our fourth live session on the Soconet V2 challenge. We had the great pleasure to have a presentation given by Matteo Tomei on his action spotting method RMSNet, currently the number one on the original Soconet. As always, many thanks to all researchers who participated in the discussions and questions. Don't forget to join us for our next session on Thursday, the 20th of May at 2 p.m. UTC. We will have a first talk by Kenneth Vats from the University of Waterloo on his multi-torm CNN method for action spotting, and a second talk by our colleague Maysam regarding our replay grounding benchmark. This will also be your chance to ask questions or discuss ideas. All the links are in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to support us and enjoy! enjoy. Matteo Tomei received the master's degree in computer engineering in 2018, and he is currently a PhD student at the AI Image Lab, the Artificial Intelligence and Computer Vision Laboratory of the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia in Italy. His work focuses on multimedia and deep learning technologies for video understanding. His research involves spatiotemporal action detection, efficient video models, privacy-preserving approaches for video understanding, and deep learning for soccer analysis and sports. He also worked on generative networks in the field of cultural heritage and arts. He recently presented his work, RMSNet, Regression and Masking for Soccer Event Spotting, at ICPR 2020, which he will talk about in today's presentation. Uh, I'm ready for introducing me. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about our recent work about soccer even spotting, which is RMSNet. RMSNet st stands for regression and masking, uh, of course, because we have a regression branch, regression part in our work in a masking strategy. We'll talk about you, these two, these two design architecture in this, in this presentation. So just a, a brief recap of what actual spotting is. Actual spotting uh, is a task which aims to find the exact timestamp of an event inside the video clip. Uh, and of course, this, this kind of task uh, fits very well with sports and with soccer, since we have strict rules which define when an event occurs. For example, we have a goal when the ball crosses the, the goal line. So we, we can define an action, an event with an, an, ex an exact timestamp. Uh, for, for our work, for RMSNet, we use the SoccerNet v1 version 1 dataset, which have been released. I, I think two or three years ago, and it involves 500 full broadcast matches with uh, three classes annotated. Of course, uh, the guys here already talked to talk you about the, the SoccerNet data set. And uh, these three classes are the goal, the card, and the substitution class. So let's go to the, to the method. But well, here we have um, our module, which is RMSNet. Uh, RMSNet is a, a modular network that can be uh, used together with a feature extracted back, extraction backbone. Uh, but our module takes as input this feature map, uh, which has two dimension, the temporal dimension and the channel dimension. So these features can be obtained by uh, giving as input to a, a 2D CNN uh, a sequence of frames, so uh, a video clip. Each frame is processed in the, um, uh, independently from the other. So we have a feature map in the end, one feature map for each frame. Then we can uh, cut the features on the temporal axis to obtain this feature map, which is T times channels. We have a sequence of operations here, a fully connected layer, uh, a sequence of one dimensional convolutions over time. And then we apply a maximum operation over time to to drop to, to remove the temporal dimension and obtain just a, a, a feature vector here. Then we have uh, another fully connected layer and two parallel fully con uh, other fully connected layers, one for the classification part of the event and the other one for the, for the regression. So the classification branch uh, predicts four different uh, probability values 
uh, one for each classes of the software data set and, the, and another one for the background class. Here, in, instead, the regression branch predicts a single scalar. In this scalar, um, to this scalar, we apply a sigmoid function so that the, the scalar is uh, comprised between zero and one. And this is the relative temporal offset of the event inside the video clip. So uh, if the, the, the event occurs at the beginning of the input video clip, we, we expect this, this output to be like zero one or zero two. Instead, if the event in the video clip happens in, in the end, we expect this, this prediction value, this color to be zero eight or zero nine, something like that. So during training, we train our module both classify correctly the, the, the event occurring in the input video clip and to correctly regress the relative temporal offset of the event inside the, the video clip. And our loss is just a combination of this categorical cross entropy loss over the four classes and the squared error loss between the predicted relative offset and the ground true relative offset of the event inside the, the video clip. And this lambda, lambda value just weights the, uh, the regression loss with respect to the classification loss. Uh, during training, we also uh, use a balancing strategy to, of course, make the regression branch see um, different uh, ground through relative temporal offsets. So that if we have a sequence of frames like here in the slide, and we have a spot of a goal, for example, we extract all the possible clips containing the spot. And of course, all these clips, clip one, clip two, three, and so on, will have the spot, the event, in a different relative temporal position. So clip one will have a ground true relative temporal offset of, let's see, let's say zero nine or one, while clip five will have a different relative temporal offset, we'll have, for example, zero one or zero two, a small value. But all of these contain the same event. But in this way, we can balance the, the different relative temporal offsets for the regression bar, for the regression branch. It's just a kind of data augmentation for training. So this is the regression part of the method. Now let's see the masking part. The masking strategy uh, relies on the insight that if we have a video clip, we have a spot, an event inside this video clip. Uh, the most discriminative parts that can tell us that an event occurred happen, happen after the, the event itself. And this is an insight uh, from the TALF method too. And uh, of course, if we have a goal, for example, there are replays or celebrations after the, the goal itself that can uh, say us that uh, an, a goal occurred. So during training, we decided to uh, randomly mask the frames happening before the event. So during training, we have a video clip with, with an event inside, and we randomly replace the frames before the event with some randomly uh, uh, frames taken from the background. So during training, the network will see the same clip, for example, two times, but only the frames after the event will be the same. So it can focus, it will focus on the frames after the event to recognize an event. For the masking strategy, we have, <clears throat> sorry, we have two hyperparameters, which are P and Q here. P is the probability uh, for masking, while Q is just um, the maximum relative temporal offset of the event inside the clip so that masking can take place. Of course, Q cannot be too high. For example, if we have, if we, if we mask uh, a clip with an event uh, in position 0, 09 with a relative temporal offset 0, 09, we will mask 90% of the, of the video, which is too much. So we don't have enough information then for, for recognizing the, act, the action using only the frames after the event itself. And we will see in the experiments how the performances uh, change when changing this P and Q. So let's go to the results. We have, of course, used the average mean average precision 
uh, for our metric, which is the uh, average of the average precision computed for different tolerances delta, and then averaged over the three action classes. Here in the plot on the left, we can, you can see the uh, performances for different spotting tolerances for the three different, different classes. And the uh, easiest to spot is the gold class, while the most difficult is the card class or our RMSnet. And in the table here, you can see instead the overall average mean average position on the validation and the test set, uh, which is pretty, pretty good. Here instead, you can see the, uh, the average precision for different spotting tolerances. Uh, on the top left plot, you can see the average precision uh, for our MassNet in red, and the, mean, and the average precision for the same network, but without the regression branch. So when we remove the regression branch, uh, for small tolerances, we have a huge drop in performances. And this is particularly, particularly evident for the tolerances that are lower than the clip duration. So we use clips uh, with uh, 40, 40 frames, if I remember correctly, uh, which correspond to 20 seconds uh, at two FPS. And when the tolerances, when the tolerance is lower than 20 seconds, we have a huge drop in performances. In the bottom left plot, instead, we see uh, how performances vary when changing the lambda, which is the weight of the uh, squared error loss. When lambda is equal to 10, we have the highest performance. And when lambda is zero, we don't have the uh, regression loss. So uh, we are in, the, in a similar situation here of the, uh, like the blue plot here in the, in the top left. On the right, instead, we see what happens when changing the two hyperparameters P and Q for the masking strategy. The best values are one third for P and 0 0.5 for Q. Uh, we reach the best performance for this uh, configuration. Instead here in the bottom right table, we see what happens when masking the frames after the event. So if we mask the frames after the event, instead of the frames before the event, of course, performance is dropped. This confirms that the inside that the most relevant features uh, happen after the event itself. Here we have uh, here we have some other uh, ablation studies. We remove the, uh, the augmentation given by the uh, uniformly distributed offsets for the regression branch. We remove the regression branch and we remove the masking strategy. And in all the cases, the performance is dropped. And finally, here in the last table, uh, we tried to uh, fine tune the feature extractor together with our RMSnet. Uh, we fine tune a portion of the uh, 2D convolutional neural networks. We use the RSnet uh, like architecture. Uh, and then, of course, we see a huge. Uh, improvement in uh, average position, uh, which suggests that maybe uh, that it can be uh, uh, the correct choice can be to uh, fine tune the feature extractor too, instead of using the pre extracted PCA features. Here on the right, instead, we see some qualitative results. In blue, we have the number of times a frame is predicted as a spot compared to the uh, red. Uh, to the ground true spot, which is highlighted in red. And if you uh, are in, if you are interested in some other details, please check our our paper, our MassNet regression and masking for soccer even spotting. Finally, uh, I would like to underline uh, more recent res <coughs> results obtained on the uh, SoccerNet V2 dataset. We um, we have we have we reached a 63.49 average mean average precision on the test set and 58.73 average mean average precision on the challenge set currently. And if you are, if you want to try uh, yourself our code, if you want to uh, improve it or use it for the challenge, this is the link of the, of the code. So this includes my presentation. And if you have any questions, please 
feel free to, to ask. Uh, that's great. So thank you very much to our speakers, Matteo. Yeah, so as we've seen, there are some very interesting insights to get from those presentations. So for example, Matteo uh, showed that it can be very interesting to focus on the context after the actions and to fine tune uh, the features ResNet, the ResNet features, rather than using the PCA. These are very important takeaways. So probably that can be uh, an, another uh, part of your own works. So hopefully someone will get uh, very good results by merging all those IDs and we will have very interesting submissions in the future weeks. Uh, so thank you very much for attending this presentation. Of course, we are going to post it on YouTube as usual. And good luck for the challenge. Um, it's, uh, there are three weeks left, three weeks remaining approximately. So if you have any question, reach us or go to Discord and ask your questions on Discord. There's no problem. We will try our best to answer them. So thank you very much and have a good day. Bye. Bye.